Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Gaming. Modern Warfare's first major patch went live, making a significant balance change to assault rifles, the S725 shotgun, and claymores. All 556 assault rifles had their minimum damage at range nerfed from 23 to 18. This should bring the M4 back down to earth with other weapons in the game. The 7.62's max one shot kill range was nerfed slightly. Its hip fire and ADS spread were also increased. Probably the most significant change was made to claymores. Pre-patch, shooting a claymore even from behind could get you killed. Post-patch, shooting claymores from behind deals no damage to you. Shooting claymores in general now caps their damage at a less than lethal level. So, if you're at full health and you shoot a claymore, it cannot kill you. The trip radius has also been nerfed so that it aligns more closely with the laser indicators. Before this change, claymores could be tripped from nearly 180 degree radius. Now they'll be much easier to avoid. That said, the trip range from victim to claymore still seems pretty extreme. Other tweaks were made to footstep audio and global illumination, but neither seems to make a major impact one way or the other. A bug that prevented riot shields from moving to a player's back if they were holding a throwing knife or thermite grenade has also been fixed. Battle chatter has also been reduced. Your character will make fewer callouts like contact or reloading. Battle chatter is now inaudible to enemies as well. So if your character yells something, only you can hear it. The patch also adds two new maps to the game, Shoot House and Krovnik Farmland. Yesterday's video went into detail about those maps and I touched on the patch notes as well. Shoot House is a standard 6v6 map. Krovnik is the game's third Ground War map. Overall, they're good additions to the game. Ground War having only two maps at launch when it was such a heavily advertised mode was a little bit frustrating. Having a third map certainly helps, but I'd still like to see more maps and maybe some that are a bit more simple. The Hardpoint game mode is now available and has its own playlist. In our final bit of Modern Warfare news, the game's final battle pass is scheduled to launch in December. Based on Activision's latest earnings call, this is slightly behind schedule. In Battlefield 5 news, the game's specific maps were set to lose their dedicated playlist next week. Thankfully, DICE have changed their tune and will be combining the Breakthrough and Conquest playlist into one dedicated playlist for both maps. This will be available until the 5.2 update goes live. Currently, the update is expected to release in December. A Pacific Squad Conquest playlist goes live next week for Tides of War challenges. Following weeks, we'll also have dedicated playlists for their challenges. So basically, if you're enjoying the new maps, there will always be a way to just play them and nothing else. The next season of Rainbow Six Siege has been announced. Season 4 is called Shifting Tides and it kicks off on December 2nd on the game's technical test server. The two new operators are Kali and Wamai or Wamai something, I don't know the pronunciation on that last one. Kali is an attacker and has a high powered sniper rifle that punches through walls leaving a gaping hole in its wake. Kali's ability is an under barrel launcher that can bore holes in reinforced walls. Wamai's well, gadget is a magnet system that stops grenades mid-air and sucks them into the device. Unfortunately, there's no new map coming with Season 4. Instead, Ubisoft are re-releasing a reworked version of Theme Park. More about Season 4's update will be revealed tomorrow as part of the Siege Pro League event. Apex Legends now has a dedicated duos mode, at least until the 19th. Players can drop in as two-man squads until then. Since Apex originally launched, players have requested support for both duos and solo playlists. Respawn have implemented them both in the past as limited time modes, much to the frustration of many fans. Considering the game just broke 70 million lifetime players, you'd think it would have the player population to support multiple modes. Death Stranding has finally been released to, well, somewhat divided reviews. Some outlets love it, others find it self-indulgent. The good news is the game seems to run quite well. Analysis from Digital Foundry shows both the base PS4 and PS4 Pro running the game at a rock solid 30 FPS. The game uses upscaling to deliver 4K output on the Pro model. The game is clearly making great use of the available hardware and generally looks stunning. 
As for the PC version, that's currently scheduled to debut sometime next year. That said, pre-orders are now available on Steam and the Epic Games Store. Unfortunately, it sounds like some users aren't having such a great time with Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC. The game is the first launch title for Rockstar's new game client and storefront. While older Rockstar titles like GTA 5 and LA Noir have been available since the launcher released, its bugs weren't apparent until Red Dead Redemption 2's launch. Players find the launcher frequently crashes or fails to download games fully. If the launcher crashes, so does the game you're playing. The good news is Rockstar are working to address these issues, as well as performance issues some players have encountered. A recent patch for Red Dead Redemption 2 fixed compatibility issues with antivirus software. Payday 2 is getting something of a revival. The game just got a major update called Silk Road. It makes several UI changes, adds a new outfits system, and makes a ton of other tweaks. Additionally, the devs have launched three new DLCs for the game a new heist called Border Crossing, an outfit pack, and a weapon mod pack. Development of future content for Payday was put on hold last year. At the time, the devs said they were moving on and had no future content that would be added to the game. Unfortunately for them, the last year has not been kind. The company is staving off bankruptcy following the critical and commercial bombing of their Walking Dead title. Back in 2017, the game got an Ultimate Edition that bundled all DLC and the base game. When that edition launched, the devs said all future content would be free. So while fans are happy that the game is getting some much needed attention and new content, they're unhappy that the devs essentially broke their promise. All that said, the future of their company still has some big question marks. If you're at all interested in Payday 2, the game is running a free-to-play weekend on PC right now, so be sure to check it out. Despite all the controversy surrounding it, it's still an incredibly deep and interesting co-op game. AMD's high-end desktop processor line for third-gen Ryzen has been revealed. First up, the 16-core Ryzen 3950X slots in at $750. It's got a 4.7 GHz boosted clock, making it the fastest Ryzen-based CPU yet. It also has an AM4 chip that will work in existing 400 series AM4 motherboards, assuming the manufacturer issues a BIOS update for it. Next, AMD revealed the Threadripper 3960X. This is a $1,400 24 core CPU on the new TRX40 platform. For people with existing Threadripper PCs, this means you'll have to upgrade your motherboard. The good news is it supports a whopping 88 PCIe Gen 4 lanes. Finally, there's the $2,000 Threadripper 3970X. This is a monster CPU with 32 cores and a boosted clock of 4.5 gigahertz. While these might all sound very expensive, given the clock speeds and core count, it's pretty much unheard of for new hardware to actually be this cheap. AMD also have a habit of drastically cutting prices for prior gen hardware. So in a year or two, these new Threadripper CPUs could be had for well under $1,000. The first gen Threadripper 1920X launched at $750 and is now readily available for $400. The exact release dates haven't been confirmed for the new Threadripper CPUs, but the 3950X launched on the 25th. In our final story this week, Overwatch 2 was recently announced, much to the bewilderment of many. Rumors about a sequel to the hit FPS have been buzzing for months. Many speculated it would be just a co-op campaign game that essentially added a complementary story mode to the Overwatch franchise. But as it turns out, Blizzard are basically releasing it as a whole new Overwatch experience. It will include a story mode, PvE modes, co-op, and an updated version of the existing multiplayer mode. For many, Overwatch 2 sounds like a glorified expansion pack. It'll feature cross-play with the original game, plus all the new game's maps, modes, and heroes will be available in the original game. The common question many players are asking is, why not just release Overwatch 2 as a free update for the existing game? Apparently, Blizzard kind of agrees. The game's director recently said, the original game and its upcoming sequel will likely be rolled up into a single client at some point. That doesn't mean it will be a free update or expansion for the game though. 
just that players who own both won't be managing two installs of essentially the same game. And that wraps it up for today's episode of This Week in Gaming. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments which stories you like the best or if you think we missed something important. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.